For Gord Oliver, watching little family-run companies and hardworking people has always inspired him. And now running Five Point Operations allows him to empower literally hundreds of those companies to achieve success. Gord, welcome to Biz One on One. Hey, thanks. It's great to be here. So what about that, watching little companies and, uh, and giving them a chance uh, to be more successful? That's what your company's all about. Yeah, it really is. It started with um, the idea that we could do we could do something better than was, was currently being done. Um, there are a lot of big companies that take advantage of the, the smaller guy, the mom and pop shop. And we saw that. We saw that from the experiences that we, we've had. And Five Point is a, is a combination of five um, founders. And we wanted to provide an opportunity to be fair to that smaller company. And, We've, we've been able to be pretty successful in doing that and, and growing our clients and having them help us and, and work with us. Now, you're one of the fastest growing companies in Canada, according to Profit Magazine. Yeah, we've been uh, quite fortunate, yeah. So, in a way, little company based in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, five guys come together. What are you doing? What is the business? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, we focus on exterior property maintenance and management. So a lot of our clients, um, you know, like BJIS, they're a massive property management company, the biggest in Canada. They look to companies like ours to provide specialized services. And we've kind of carved out our niche market of what we want to offer, what we want to be the best at. And so we do snow removal. Uh, we have thousands of properties that we do snow removal for across Western Canada. Uh, and up into the Yukon. And then again, the idea is to use those smaller companies, the mom and pop companies, to provide that service. So you've ended up, uh, you're kind of like the in-between, the broker in a sense, between large organizations that need snow removal on their, on their parking lot yeah. and the guy that's actually out there in the truck removing the snow. We have our own operations too, so we, we have you know, almost 200 employees. We do the work ourselves in Kelowna, Edmonton, and Calgary. So we know what we're talking about when we go out and do these services. We do our own asphalt and concrete work, uh, line painting, uh, landscaping. We do that all in-house. So when we're talking to contractors, it's contractor talking to contractor. And then of the other five partners, we have management style executives um, talking to their management style executives. Five guys come together to form this company. Tell me about the other four guys and how that all fits together. So one of my partners who I've been partner with, you know, I'm 35 and my dad is one of our partners. Um, and he and I have always really loved the way that we each complement each other. He's a former vice president of Bank Montreal. He's got that corporate um, kind of, he, he understands what it takes to work with massive companies, so that is his background. He also retired very young from the bank and started his own wealth management company. Um, we brought him out of retirement to help us when we started growing the way that we did to really get hands-on with 5.2. Uh, so that's one of the partners, Gordon H. Oliver. That's funny because you're, you got the same name. He's yeah. Gord Oliver Sr., you're junior. It's yeah. a family business and most people would think, oh yeah, well, his dad, he's taken over his dad's company and it's the other way around. Yeah, no, I, it is. It's really great. And it's an interesting dynamic because a lot of uh, people who, you know, take over family businesses, there's that, you know, this is my dad's company and I'm just working my way in. Well, we're really equally yoked in that, in the partnership of, I know that there's lots of stuff that I have no idea how to do well that he does incredibly well. And he looks at me maybe a little bit differently because we kind of started this and he, he had to get involved a little, you know, a little later on in, in, the, in it. So is he, is he respectful as your dad that he's kind of working his way into your company and instead of the other <laughs> well, way around? Um, yeah, a little bit, yeah, yeah. You know, like he doesn't see himself as any, any greater than the rest of the four of us, absolutely not. Um, but we, the other partners too, you know, we have uh, Jason Ritchie and, Ke and Terry Jackson. Both, those are 40 year old guys, um, both very experienced in the field. Um, Terry ran his own concrete company for years. Jason ran his own landscaping company for years. 
and then the younger one of us who just turned 30 is Kevin Bosch, and he's been running successful small companies, dealing with small contractors, those types of things. So it, it really is a perfect combination of five people when we match it to the business model that we created. So where's it going? You're growing, you're 17th on the list of fast growing companies. 12th. 12th, sorry, yeah. 12th on the list. Give me those Check five, that. Sp give me those five <laughs> spots. They're, they're 12th. <laughs> You're 12th on the list of five growing, uh, fastest growing companies in Canada. Where are you going and how are you going to grow, continue to grow? So kind of the really, the almost amazing thing of our business model is we can grow at an incredible rate with expanding either our clients um, with the same services or expanding geographically. Because we work with smaller companies, it's a matter of management in our Kelowna office of creating regional directors who look after specific areas or um, the specific functions. So we can grow our snow removal division, we can grow our landscaping division, our asphalt division, um, our exterior siding division. There's the opportunities are endless and we need to make sure we're focused on the right um, areas. And that, that we will we'll grow where the people have strengths. Now, you are an entrepreneur um, you got your business degree, but you went in business for yourself right out of, out of the gate. You've had your own challenges in, in business, and yet you're a believer that anybody can start their own business, and if they work hard enough, they can be successful. Anybody? Yeah, no, I absolutely believe that anybody uh, can take basic principles and build on them to build, their, build themselves enough to do what it takes to be a business owner. Um, that's not saying they'll be successful in the first year. And, and I think that it's naive to think that you can. Uh, a lot of the studies that I've done and, and case studies where I study other entrepreneurs, ones that have been really successful, the most common thing of a successful entrepreneur is failure. And so the, the, one hard, the hardest thing that people have to realize is, you know, they tr oh, I tried to be a business person once. I failed. Yeah, well, so did. Warren Buffett, so it's all these big entrepreneur type people have failed. And uh, I, I love the idea of changing people's mindsets to think like they own their business, whether they're an employee or not. Like I mentioned, you know, our employees, I really want them to think like it's their opportunity to work with us, not for us. And so maybe that more so I believe the mindset of a business owner can be taught to anyone. So Gord, what's the, what, what is the toughest part about being in business? Is it starting the business? Um, you know, that's, that's a great question because I really believe that starting a business is really easy. It, it, what, $500 to go incorporate and start a business? You don't even have to do that until you're making $30,000. You don't even need a GST number. You need to find a mentor and somebody that can help you from the starting a business, having a vision or an idea or a dream um, a lot of us have dreams. Um, I can't say that I dreamt of being a snow removal tycoon, <laughs> right? Like that's, that wasn't necessarily the dream that I had, but I had the dream to be in business with great people and looking after people who um, need, need maybe that little bit of guidance to, to carry on and to continue on in business. Um, starting the business isn't the hard part. It's the, you know, when you're up, five nights in a row from nine o'clock until two in the morning doing the back-end business activities that it requires to be successful, that's what people get a little tired of. Maybe our mindsets turn to a nine to five mentality a little too quickly and running a business is definitely not nine to five. Um, it's 24-7, 365. Your heart has to be in it too and that's where, you know, the, the vision of what you want out of your life, if you match that to a work ethic that you can produce, that's where you can really start to have fun while working. Um, I have met a lot of incredible business owners who love working. You know, they're not that it's an addiction, but they just enjoy working hard. I uh, think of the highest level athletes out there. They love pushing it to the limit, their bodies pushing it to the limit. You can be that way in business too, but again, you really do have to train yourself to be that way. It's not an overnight thing. And you have to realize that the small little failures that you have can be matched with small little successes too and allow your successes to overshine your failures. 
So you're a snow removal tycoon. And for those of people that are watching in maybe Arizona, they're wondering, what the heck is snow removal? <laughs> yeah, I'm not expanding to Arizona, Randy. <laughs> so how do you figure out, how do you, how do you start a company like that and get it growing so fast? So uh, when I was 19, I went to the Philippines and I lived there for two years. And a lot of the mentality that I share in my business experience right now comes from that experience. Um, I saw people over there who literally had nothing. Um, I didn't just live in, you know, Metro Manila. I went up north uh, where people lived in bamboo houses. And the, when I was there for the first six months and I didn't speak the language yet, um, I just saw poverty. I, I didn't see what, the, what it actually was. Once I learned the language, which I'm fluent in two dialects of Filipino, which is very weird for a white, big white guy, um, I saw them, they were so happy. Their communities were happy. Their, their, uh, if somebody had a need, they would fill it as best they could and they all lived and they were a lot happier than what, when I returned when I was 21. Uh, the culture shock that I had coming home was that we weren't as happy as they were. And so that's kind of the whole mentality that we take into Five Point is why can we not be a community um, all of us making good money, but why can we not be happier? Why can we not um, share in each other's successes? And if we fail, let's, let's be okay with it. Um, let's not hide from failure. Let's support each other and let's be that, what I saw over there. And I, that changed my life. Being over there for, for a couple of years changed my life because it, first of all, it taught me that I wanted to be a business person. When I, before I had left, I'd gone to school to be a biochemist. You know, I'm grateful that didn't happen. Um, but when I came out and just started finance and I knew I wanted to start a business because I loved people and I loved working with people and I found that was gonna be a great way for me to um, kind of build my community. And that's what we've done. Well, that's a fabulous story, Gord. And uh, so great to have you on Biz 101 today. And congratulations on uh, Five Point Operations. Thanks, Randy. Thank you so it, much. Right?